Hey everyone, higher running coach and Hoka athlete Sage Kande here with another Training Talk Tuesday. It's been a, a while since I got one of these out. I think we're on like episode 40 something. I'll list it there. But we're going to talk about your top voted question uh, from several weeks ago. And it is, how do you structure long runs for ultras? It's talking to a friend about this. For example, training for a 50k could be a 32k or 20 mile long run and then a 16k or 10 mile long run the next day instead of a single long run. Uh, also caught uh, one on Tuesday here in New Zealand. So question from New Zealand. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Question about long runs and ultras. Uh, this is kind of a back to back long run example. If you had two days uh, over the weekend or less busy days where you do a, a pretty long long run and then you follow it up with another medium length long run or vice versa. Honestly, I haven't been too into back to back long runs. Uh, generally with a lot of the plans that Coach Sandy and I structure at our higherrunning.com website, that is a business plug, uh, we have kind of like a midweek longer workout or medium long effort. And then on the weekend, you smash it really hard with a long run, but it depends on the week. And we're not always going with cycles of seven days. Sometimes we do cycles of 10 days or 12 or 14 days. So it's not a hard long run every weekend and the long runs change over the course of your training plan, whether you're four weeks or five weeks out from your goal race or you're eight or 10 weeks out from your goal race uh, or you're tapering. So then, then you're cutting the long runs. But generally with back-to-back -back long runs and my philosophy on this may change, uh, I might do more if I'm training for a super, super long ultra marathon, like a hundred miles with a lot of climbing and the climbing really matters. So it's not just the sheer distance. Am I racing a 50 K it's how much climbing is in that 50 K, right? It's a lot different if you're running a flat 50 K or 31 mile race versus, uh, something like the speed goat 50 K, which has, uh, 12,000 feet of climbing or what is that in meters? Like 3,500 meters of climbing, right? And it's in the mountains. So uh, there's a certain aspect when you're looking at designing your long run workouts for your ultra race, what your experience level is, what your tolerance to injury is, how many miles or how many weeks uh, per week are you running in terms of your volume, but also how much climbing are you doing in that week? And what's what type of race are you training for exactly? How much climbing does it have? What is the relative intensity of your other quality workouts during that week? And you could get away with a lot of increased quality, let's say high intensity hill repeats, all uphill tempo runs during the week, and then do a long run that also might get some quality in it. And that's a really high quality training week. And it's going to stress the muscles and tendons a lot rather than having to worry about doing two back to back long runs, say on a Saturday and Sunday. So that's the benefit. And we kind of borrowed this actually from Pete Fitzinger, Advanced Marathon. Uh, the book's called Advanced Marathon Running, I believe, uh, where there are a lot of midweek, medium long runs, and then the real long runs on the weekend. They're not back-to-back -back long runs, but you're consistently getting in longer, harder efforts. So you're not going out for LSD. It's not long, slow distance. You're actually throwing down on a lot of long run workouts, but you do them more sparingly. So examples of how that changes, I wouldn't necessarily do uh, you know, a 20 mile long run, then a 16 mile long run. You could on some weekends, you could do the back to back long runs, but especially if I was just training, just training for a 50 K, uh, you know, I in, traditionally in my career, I mostly just do one long run and it might not even be 20 miles. That's a pretty high percentage of, of a 31 mile race, right? Almost two thirds of the distance, uh, especially if you're on trails and you're climbing a lot. Sometimes you have to go more by time on feet. So say this 50 K you're looking at a six hour finish. Well, you better at least get a long run up over three hours to see how it feels to spend three hours on your feet on the trails. And not only that, but you try to mimic the, the climbing ratio to distance ratio of your race. So if it's a 50 K with 12,000 feet of climbing like speed goat, uh, and you're doing a 25 K long run, you're going to try to hit half that climbing in the half the distance, right? So 6,000 feet of climbing, 25K, that's pretty steep. Um, so you want to hit rolling terrain. You want to hit technical terrain if that's what your race has. And that's really the most important thing with long runs is trying to make it specific to your race to simulate the ups and downs in the elevation profile of your race 
also simulate running faster paces, uh, but for a shorter distance. And keep in mind, duration does matter. Time on feet plays a big role. And if you're doing high quality hill repeats and high quality speed workouts during the week, the long run doesn't need to be as much of a focus. That being said, some example of long run workouts, and I've talked about this, I think I linked uh, variations on long run workouts for ultra marathon runners, but also marathon runners. We don't always just go out and run slow and easy on our long runs. We throw down. A lot of times you'll have a long run, be it uh, 32K or 20 miles, and the second half you do an up-tempo, 30 or 40 minutes fast uh, at over 80% max heart rate. Or you do a fartlek where you're surging, uh, maybe timed fartlek, surging for three minutes at like 10K or half marathon race pace intensity uh, and then taking a two minute rest. Or you're, you're really trying to work some of the uphills and downhills to pound your legs at a much faster than ultra marathon race pace. So the long runs are not easy. It's not just about getting the distance invert in, it's about hitting higher intensity than you would experience in a race because that's gonna give you strength. And if you do that kind of long run, if you do a hard long run workout, we don't usually recommend the back to back long runs because then you're, it's just an injury risk, right? Uh, you know, you could do it theoretically, it's good to run on tired legs, but hopefully your legs are tired just from the sheer amount of weekly mileage you're doing and the sheer amount of quality that you're doing, right? If you're doing more speed workouts and high intensity climbing, yes, you will go into your weekend long run tired, but because of that, uh, you only have to do one long run over the weekend or whenever you have more time to train. Uh, so it's not something we always recommend, the back-to-back -back long runs, but it does change week to week. Some weeks you might do a medium long run. Some weeks you might hit it really hard and do a super long, long run. And it could be a pretty high fraction of your weekly mileage. Uh, let's say if you're running over 50 to 60 miles a week, up to 100K a week, 90 to 100K a week, that's a pretty good amount of volume, but your ultra race might be that long. You might be running a 50 mile race or an 80K race. So what you have to do in one day on race day is what you've been doing for a whole week. Uh, that's actually fairly common though for ultra runners because a lot of, I know a lot of you uh, have a lot of obligations. You don't have full time to train uh, and you don't necessarily want to train more than 100 kilometers a week or 60 miles a week because it's an injury risk too. Uh, so if you're putting in a long run though of over 20 miles or 32K, that's a pretty high fraction of your weekly volume, right? It's about one third of, of your weekly volume. Uh, and that's a good amount of time. If there's a lot of climbing involved on that long run, it could be six hours or, or longer. So it's a lot of time spent on your feet. It's a lot of climbing. Uh, and if you throw down, if you have some intensity kilometers or miles in there, you get a lot of bang for your buck out of that long run workout. So what I'm saying basically in a nutshell to close this out is you've got to be changing the long runs up. It's what we do in our higherrunning.com ultra marathon training plans. We don't have a ton of back-to-back -back long runs and not all long runs are hard. Some of them you are building up and it is LSD, long, slow distance. Some of it is about just time on feet, dialing in your gear, dialing in your nutrition. Some, some long runs, you know, weather might cut short or change the pace or intensity on. You throw pace out the window if it's a technical trail with a lot of climbing, especially at high altitude. Um, so, you know, that's just a good example of how you'd structure uh, long run workouts. Again, speeding up in the second half, having some intensity in there, but then also realizing in the training plan, you've hopefully been doing some high intensity sprinkled in maybe during the week to make you tired before you go into that long run. So you're tapping into fat burning, you're low on glycogen stores maybe, uh, stuff like that, but you're building overall strength and you're trying to minimize the risk of injury overuse injury, uh, and also mental burnout. So thank you so much again for subscribing on here, uh, checking out these videos again. The film went live uh, from Steven Ganoza. Uh, the film Starting Over is on our channel at Mutt Running. That's Mutt Running, M-U-T Running. Uh, you could check it out there as well as in the description below. Also check out Steven Ganoza's channel. Uh, he's the producer director of this film uh, that kind of shares some of my story over the last year. Uh, really great. Uh, you can watch it online for free there on the Mutt Running channel. Thank you for all the feedback, positive energy and support. I'm gonna document my own training heading up towards UTMB now, uh, maybe some other summer events and mountain races. Stay tuned for that. 
Thank you so much again for subscribing on here, uh, liking these videos, sharing them. Stay tuned for more Training Talk Tuesdays. You can comment below with future Training Talks uh, topics that you'd like to hear about and vote up other comments because the top voted one will be the one I will answer uh, hopefully by next Tuesday. Again, thanks to title sponsor Hoka for keeping the dream alive. Hope you're doing well. Check out our training plans at higherrunning.com where Sandy, Coach Sandy and I sell uh, training plans for any surface, any distance. Again, thank you so much. Uh, thanks to the Patreon supporters uh, for keeping this channel going. Uh, and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.